They're very grateful. Bienvenidos, bienvenidos y bienvenidas. Feliz lunes, feliz lunes, happy, happy Monday. Uh, as happy as a Monday can be. Uh, okay. Um, vamos a ver, vamos a ver, vamos a, vamos a practicar con uh, dos cosas, básicamente dos cosas hoy. Vamos a practicar con um, el tema del tema de usamos el, la, los, o las. We're going to delve a little more into this. Do I use that word the? And, and we're going to take this in a, a, a kind of on a different tack than maybe a, a textbook would take it. We're going to take it only from the point of view of what you need to know for what you guys do at your level. Um, and we are going to start to look at this business of, of using two verbs at once to talk about different activities. And that also is a very big topic, but we're going to condense it into um, three different verbs that are super, super common. So we're gonna break down that big topic of using two verbs at once in conversation. And we're going to break it into um, uh, taking kind of modules of, you know, a certain number of verb combinations per week. Um, okay. A ver. Um, it was suggested to me, and it was a great suggestion. I encourage you always to have suggestions like this when you, uh, when it comes to mind, that um, everybody should take a minute, a minute to... Uh, talk about themselves just a little bit. Some really basic information. Um, and I will put up on this screen uh, various things and then share it. Um, just basic information we want to know. Um, a little bit of um, a little bit of an introduction to what you do, uh, etc. Okay, y vamos a compartir. I will share this with you here. Ah, uh, muy bien. Okay, things like haha. Ah, presentarse, 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 presenting yourself, introducing yourself. By the way, we don't use the word introducir to introduce. And there's a reason for that. Introducir sounds like, what, wouldn't that be a great cognate if we could use introducir and say, me introduzco, I introduce myself, but you cannot. Because introducir means to put something inside of something else. So, me introduzco would mean I am putting myself inside of something else, which can get pretty nasty sexual connotations, <laughs> which is what would run through people's minds. You cannot use introducir to introduce yourself. So... Um, vamos a cambiar. We're going to change this to, to uh, me present, uh, or, uh, well, well, we're just going to leave it blank there. Here's some information we're going to use, right? Um, me llamo, well, cosas fáciles, easy stuff, cosas muy básicas. Uh, me llamo, soy de, soy, uh, profesión. Something telling about what you do. Uh, tengo, I have. Talk about your pets. Talk about your family. Talk about uh, anything that you have. And I want everybody to start out. I will start off first that you've got a model to work from. And then we're just going to take people in turns. I'm not going to send you off in, into groups through this. I will send you off into groups um, when we get into the double verbs thing. Pero, vale, uh, bueno, uh, me llamo Marilyn, por ejemplo, me llamo Marilyn, uh, soy de Michigan, soy de Michigan originalmente, originalmente. 
puedo decir que también, también soy de Chicago, porque viví 11 años en Chicago. I lived 11 years in Chicago. Soy de Illinois, soy de Michigan originalmente. Uh, soy maestra, obviamente soy maestra. Soy madre, soy madre de dos hijos. Uh, tengo dos hijos. Tengo dos hijos y también tengo cinco gatos. En mi casa tengo cinco gatos, que son gatos adoptados. Todos adoptados. ¿Bien? ¡Pum! Ok. Eso es todo. That's it. That's my little example. I like all of you who feel comfortable enough to do that, and I hope most of you do this, I'd like everybody to take a, a little uh, turn saying something about yourself. Oop, we're letting one person in a little bit late. Uh, I want everybody to take a turn talking about themselves. Muy bien, okay. Isaac, quieres empezar? You wanna start? Oh, I think you need to unmute yourself. And before you speak, everybody remember to unmute themselves. Vale. Bueno, hola. Buenos días. Buenos me días. Amo, me llamo Isaac. Nací en Israel, en Jerusalén. Vine a Estados Unidos. I'm trying to practice numbers, so we're going to do... <laughs> Está bien. 1980. Muy bien, muy bien, Isaac. 1980. Yeah, mi casa en Minneapolis. Vivió en Tucson, Arizona. Yo estudio ingeniería eléctrica. Eh, what else? Just, uh, Quizás eso es todo. Muy interesante. Eres de uh, Israel. Eres de Jerusalem. Sí. Una ciudad muy anciana. Trabajo una una en... ciudad muy histórica, ¿no? Sí, muy histórica. Jerusalén. Y hace ah, calor ahora, también. Ahora, ahora estoy retirado. Ah, oh, 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 ok. Uh, retired, ¿verdad? Yes. Ok, vale. No se dice retirado. You would think. Because it's kind of cognate sounding, isn't it? Right? There is, and there is a verb, retirar. But retirar is, is, is not really retired. It's retired in the sense of withdrawn. Oh. Okay. So the way that one says... But well, I guess Google doesn't know that. Uh, uh, yeah. The way you say retired, I'm going to write it in the chat, chat box, is uh, jubilar. And it's jubilar se. We'll talk about that another another uh, session, but uh, jubilar, okay, uh, soy jubilado, I'm a retired person. How do you spell it? Jul uh, jubilado, estoy jubilado, jubilado, J-U-B-I-L-A-D-O. Uh, estoy, if you're describing yourself, then you're saying you're in the state of being retired. So then it's estoy jubilado. If you say, I am a retired person, then it's not estoy, but soy. Soy jubilado. I am a retiree. Ah, soy jubilado. I'm a retiree. Estoy jubilado. I am retired. Para una mujer, for a woman, estoy jubilada. Estoy jubilada. Muy bien, gracias, Isaac. ¿Quién es el próximo? Who's the next? Who's the next very person who wants to step up and just say something about you? Ah, bien, bien, vale. Okay. Sí, sí, su. Uh, yeah. Hola. Uh, me llamo Suai. Um, yo vivo de Scottsdale. Uh, soy originalmente de Malaysia. Ah. Uh, Malaysia es un país de sudeste de Asia. 
uh, TNA uh, Clima Tropica. Uh, siempre es um, caliente y humido. Ah. Uh, mi uh, pasatiempos son uh, casa cactus, cocinar, viajar y el senderismo. Okay. Um, mucho gusto a todos. Muy bien, muy bien. Uh, Malasia es un grupo de islas, ¿verdad? Uh, es un grupo de islas, islands. Uh, península. Oh, una península, perdón. No, no sé mucho de geografía. <ríe> Entonces, sí, una península, sí. Yeah. Claro, claro, sí. En el sur de Asia. Bien, yeah. En el sur de Asia, en el sur de Asia. Tenemos estudiantes internacionales. Qué interesante. Muy bien, gracias. ¿Quién es el próximo? Who's the next one? ¿Quién es la próxima? I'm going to try. Ah, bien. Ok, you guys ready? Sí, sí, no listos, hacer. ready. <laughs> Me llamo Linda. Uh, soy bibliotecaria. Bibliotecaria. Library. Muy bien. Pero no trabajo, trabajo ahora. Así que soy voluntario. Voluntaria. Voluntaria. Bien. Sí. Tengo tres gatos. Soy Mississippi. Soy de? Soy de Mississippi. Soy de Mississippi, sí. Uh, de. Entonces, de es importante. Soy de Mississippi. Yeah. I am from Mississippi. Sí, bien. Gracias. So, that was okay, right? Está bien, sí. Uh, la única cosa, here's our only other thing, and I'm going to put this in the chat box, this word here. Because this is a word we use a lot. Ahora. Oh. Ahora. And because we spell it with an H, with an H. Yes. want to pronounce that. Because I, I, your brain yeah. in English is telling you, yeah. say this, uh, and this is like a, this, this H, this H problem of pronouncing yeah. the H is a problem that probably 80% of people who speak Spanish have this issue. Yeah. People learning Spanish from French often don't have this issue because French doesn't pronounce the H either. I was, oh. I was so focused on library, saying librarian right. <laughs> <laughs> I messed up now. Yes, and, and, and I have to, and see, and I get to compliment. So that word ahora is ahora, ahora. which is kind of hard for us to say because yeah. we go from one vowel sound and we slide right into a second but different vowel sound. Uh -oh. Ahora, 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 ahora. And you don't really need to, well, you, you need to know when you read that it's spelled with an H, but of course you won't be writing for me, so, you know. Okay. Ahora, ahora. Okay, a ver. Uh, and uh, anytime you see that H, unless it's a CH, in which case then it's a CH, like you think, we ignore that H, bien. But bibliotecaria is, is the one that you got out that was the hardest word. Okay. Muy bien, gracias. Gracias, Linda. Okay. ¿Quién es el próximo? ¿Quién es la próxima? Who's next? Ah, okay. Yeah, uh, oh, okay. Uh, ba, 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 ba. Trish, Trish. Okay. Can you hear me okay? Okay. Okay. And, and make sure you speak up. Hopefully my dog will not bark. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> me llamo es Trish. Vivo en Scottsdale. Nací y crecí en Tulsa, Oklahoma. Cuando tenía... 25 años, me convertí una asistente de vuelo y me mudé a Chicago. Viví en Chicago 12 años antes de que mudé a Scottsdale en 1991. Tengo dos hijas, dos niñetas, una perra y un esposo. Ah, muy bien. Mi trabajo es yo cuido de los animales. Mi pasatiempo es hacer ejercicio. Hacer ejercicio es buen pasatiempo, ¿sí? <laughs> buen pasatiempo, hacer ejercicio. Ok, y me llamo. And remember, with me llamo, it goes straight. There is no S after that. Me llamo 
me llamo Ana, me llamo Catalina, me llamo José, lo que sea, whatever your name might be. Uh, me llamo, and, and, you know, we're so used to my name is, <laughs> mm -hmm. but we, we don't need an is because the me llamo all together is my name is, or literally it means I am called. I call myself. And we don't in English normally say I call myself. Somebody would totally understand you, but they would think, well, that's a little formal way to say it, isn't it? Yeah. So, you know, in Spanish, that doesn't sound. Now, now in Spanish, you can say soy and use your name, or me llamo, or mi nombre es, mi nombre es, then I can use that word es, mi nombre es. Uh, bien, ah, ¿dónde en Chicago? ¿Dónde viviste en Chicago? ¿Dónde en Chicago? ¿En el norte o en la ciudad? Uh, uh, norte, uh, um, Deerfield. Ah, Deerfield. Viví, viví en, um, uh, viví en, um, Cerca de, oye, hace tantos años, boy, it's been so many years. Um, sí, muy cerca. Um, well, uh, Wilma wrote, um, Northbrook, viví en Northbrook. Um, Deerfield Road. Y, Deerfield yeah. Road. It's been a long time. <laughs> Lo conozco. Igual aquí, same thing here. Sí, ah, sí. Uh, viví en uh, Northbrook. And North Brook. Oh, okay. yeah, yeah. Cerca de Glenview. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Muy cerca. Bien. Vale. Magnífico. Yeah. Una compañera de Chicago. A, 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 a companion from Chicago. Ok. Bien. Vale. Bien. ¿Quién? ¿Quién? ¿Quién es? ¿Quién es? Ok. Mary. Mary. ¿Quieres? Ok. Uh, yeah. Me llamo Mati. Uh, vivo en Scottsdale. We... Um, no. Sorry. Me mudé a Arizona con mi uh, marido y tres hijos de Israel hace uh, 30 años. Uh, tengo dos hijos y una hija. Uh, mi esposo y yo nos jubilado. Ah, ah eh, estamos jubilados. Oh, está... Voy a escribirlo. I'm going to write it in our chat box. Estamos okay. jubilados. We are retired. Okay. Uh, amamos a los perros, pero no tenemos animales en los últimos años porque solíamos viajar. Ah, we usually travel. Solemos viajar, solemos viajar. Es yeah. difícil cuidar a mascotas cuando viajamos, ¿verdad? Yeah, it's hard to take care of animals when you travel. Yeah, yes. Yeah. Vale. Impossible. Arizona es un excelente lugar para vivir. Muy bien. Sí, excepto en julio y en agosto. <laughs> excepto en julio y en agosto. That's a mi esposo, a mi esposo que está trabajando allá arriba en la casa, mi, a mi esposo le gusta, le encanta el calor. Le encanta el calor. No sé por qué, pero a mi esposo le encanta el calor. My husband loves the heat. Uh, caminamos, caminamos anoche. We walked last night. Caminamos juntos anoche. Y cam caminamos porque hacía un poco de calor, pero 96 grados. 96, ¿sí? A las, a las 9 de la noche. ¡Ay! Terrible. Y a él le encanta. ¡Ah! Es magnífico. Ok. <laughs> Bien. ¿Quién es el próximo? ¿Quién es el próximo? Oh, ¿quién es la próxima? Who's next? Bien. Oh, ok, muy oh, bien. Sí. Oh. oh, perdón, sí. Ah. Diane, do you want to go? You start, I'll do next. Okay. Uh, me llamo Cynthia, vivo en Scottsdale, pero soy de Chicago, Downers Grove. Mi mudé a Arizona el año pasado cuando mi 
Uile, No Tengo Esposo, Ios, Gato, O Pero, uh, Pero Tengo Muchas Plantas. Ah! Um, me gusta viajar y ver libros de misterio. De misterio. Muy bien, muy bien. Entonces, estás totalmente libre. You are totally free para viajar y todo. Sí, aunque no viajamos ahora, although we cannot travel so much now, pero... Dentro de poco, maybe, maybe soon, maybe soon, maybe in the next six months. <laughs> okay. Gracias, Cynthia. Okay. Próxima, próxima, next one. Hola. Okay. Me llamo Diane. Vivo en Arizona y en Downers Grove, Illinois. Ah, bien, y si bien dos para Downers Grove. Qué mundo pequeño, what a small world. <laughs> Estoy en mi casa en el Roy porque es mucho más rasco aquí. También toda mi familia vive en Illinois. Estoy jubilada del trabajo como de administrador de la Universidad Comunitario. Ah. Uh, sí, sí. Entiendo. Uh, estoy uh, jubilada para siempre ocupado. Mejor no salgo a cenar y teatros con mis amigos. Hay no divertido. Quiero volver vivo a Arizona en Antonio para que sabe. Ah, quién sabe, who knows, oh, no. quién sabe, eso es, ah, eso es, quién sabe, nadie sabe, nadie sabe, de verdad, nobody knows, really, ay, ah, bien, gracias, ok, ok, próximo, próximo, Pro ah, bien, sí, 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 I, you know, and I can't take you by the, because I, each one of you, when you see the grid, if you put the grid up, We're all in different orders, depending on who's on your computer. Bien. Okay. Bien. Hola. Hola. Me, me llamo Jeff. Um, mi esposa y yo mudamos de Nueva York hace 22 meses. Uh, ¿22 meses? Meses? Meses. Meses, yes. Uh, mi esposa era la chica de la, al lado. La chica de... De al lado. De al lado. Oh, she's next to you. The girl next door. Ah, uh, oh. My wife Era was vecina. the girl next door. She was a neighbor. Era vecina. <laughs> yes. De uh, la casa y... al lado mm -hmm. del... Okay. Okay. Uh, y nosotros hemos estado casados por 43 años. Ah, felicitación. Mm. 43 años. Mm. Mi Felici... esposa... Sufre mucho. <laughs> Sufre mucho. Oh, la pobre. No uh, lo creo. I don't believe that. No lo creo. Estoy jubilado. Ahora estoy casa. No soy un edificio, pero un designado por el tribunal para niños adultos. Okay. En casa, at home? I uh, know. Estoy casa. It's a um, volunteer to look over, look after um, uh, foster kids. Oh, foster kids. okay. So okay. appointed by the court to look after them. La institución. So eh, el nombre de la institución es casa. Yes. yes. Oh, sí. eres muy generoso. Mm -hmm. Jeffrey, eres muy generoso. Uh, mucho um, Necesito, necesito, o whatever. Hay, hay, hay muchos que necesitan ayuda. Yes. yes. Hay muchos. Oh. There are many. Hay mucha gente. Mm -hmm. Hay mucha gente que necesita yes. ayuda, yes. claro. Uh, hay muchos jóvenes. Uh, ten times the number of casas. Ten times. 
thousands and thousands, uh, miles y miles. <laughs> wow. That is buena uh, persona. Wow, you are a good person. Well, <laughs> uh, también estoy curador del Museo del Papá Noel. Realmente. Cur Corridor del Papa. ¿Y dónde está? El curador del Santa Claus Museum. <laughs> ¿Dónde está? ¿Dónde está este uh, museo? En uh, Phoenix. En Phoenix. Phoenix, ¿verdad? Yeah, um, busy Tamos. It's a group of, it's a network of people. Busy oh. Tamos, 15 o 20 escuelas uh, en uh, diciembre uh, con Papá Noel oh. en uh, libros y, uh, y juguetes oh. para niños con problemas. ¡Qué magnífico! <laughs> so. ¡Qué magnífico! Eso me gusta mucho. Uh, and uh, como Gordo Cero dice, eso es todo, amigos. Eso es todo. Ok, eso es todo. That's it. <laughs> is yeah. Porky Pig Gordo Cero? ¿Gordo? <laughs> 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 ok. <laughs> ok. Uh, bueno, gracias. Okay. Muy bien. Ah, ¿quién, quién, quién? Who's next? Who wants to talk about themselves a little bit? Un poquito, un poquito. Uh, I'll go, say? Marilyn. Uh, oh, let, let's take Carlos first. I think Carlos is his hand, but okay. we'll then we'll take you next. Oh, okay. 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 Yes. Me llamo Carlos e vivo en Scottsdale, Arizona. Soy originalmente Brooklyn, Nuevo York. Aha. Uh -huh. he, he estado casado con mi esposa por 30 años. Ah. Yo irá un contador público a test que soy jubilado. Ah, bien, contador. Es un trabajo importante. Es sí. un trabajo difícil. Mi suegro, uh, my father-in-law, mi suegro, es ex contador. También ah. es jubilado, claro. <laughs> Pero sí, contador. Es buen trabajo, es buena profesión. Good. Eso me gusta. Muy bien, sí, bien. Ah, Nora, ¿tienes algo? Uh, me llamo Nora. Estoy jubilada. Um, soy originario de California, pero viví en Mississippi cuando era más joven. Ah. Uh, mi abi es tocar la flauta. Toco en tres grupos. Pero todos mis conciertos han sido cancelados desde marzo. Puedo adivinar por qué, verdad? Em, actualmente estoy jugando en un grupo virtual este verano. Ah, bien. Ah, uh, playing. La flauta, mm -hmm. ¿verdad? Es tocar. Voy a escribirlo. I'm going to write that in the chat box. This is one of those odd little things. In Spanish, sometimes they have totally different words where we, we use only one. In Spanish, where we use play for instruments, for music, for games, for sports, there are two separate words that both translate to play. But one specifically talks about music and instruments and the other talks about games and sports. So the one about instruments is tocar. And the interesting little thing about tocar, uh, por ejemplo, por ejemplo, toco, uh, toco un poquito el piano. I play piano a little bit, si, ¿Sí? toco. Toco muy mal. I play very badly. Toco muy mal el piano. <laughs> I play piano badly. Yeah. Um, uh, ella toca la flauta. She plays flute. Uh, tocar also means to touch. To touch. Mm -hmm. And this makes sense because tocar, whether it's, you know, piano or guitarra or flauta, you have to touch the instrument to play it. So that's kind of a logical jump from tocar because it means to touch. But the other verb, which I will write in the box also, for playing sports or games of any type is jugar, jugar. And um, that's what, yeah, that is one of the oddball verbs that gets a funny vowel change in the middle. You're gonna see a verb like jugar, um, in the latter part of our lesson today, uh, 
So the conjugation, just so you'll see what it will look like, if you want to say I play, it's juego. And the noun for game, the noun, not the verb, but the noun that no, uh, says game is el juego. El juego, el juego means game. Juego, it can also, without the el, be a conjugation for the verb, I play. Uh, it's got, it goes from jugar, J-U, to J-U-E. Okay. Uh, Marilyn? Si, uh, Nora, I, did, I did have a question when I was working on this little exercise. Mm -hmm. I saw two ways to say hobby. It was either like hobby, or there was another word, pasatiempo. Pasatiempo, si. Sí. I was wondering which one is actually the correct uh, way. There are two, they're interchangeable. Uh, I think because we are so close to Mexico, I think there's been a kind of an en masse adoption in Mexico of that word hobby. Uh, pasatiempo you hear a lot more in other countries. Uh, I think the farther you get from the United States, the less they use hobby. But, you know, that's one of those things. Because we're close to Mexico, there are times when we kind of exchange some words. Por ejemplo, uh, Formalmente en España se dice el reloj inteligente, a smartwatch. Pero muchas veces se dice el smartwatch. So, you know, there are a certain number of words. Of course, hobby doesn't seem very technical, but especially in technical lingo, um, technology lingo, a lot of times uh, the English word just gets adopted quite often. Así es. Uh, okay. Muy bien. And lots of you use the me mudé. I moved from. I moved from. Me gusta muchísimo. Tenemos mucha gente de... Tenemos mucha gente de Nueva York. Tenemos mu mucha gente de Israel aquí. Tenemos mucha gente de Illinois. Bien. Es magnífico. Uh, alguien más? Anybody else? Anybody I missed? I uh, can go. Sí, sí, dinos, dinos. Bueno, any. Uh. Oh, you have to unmute yourself. Uh, yes, unmute yourself, Amy. There you go. Okay. Okay. Um, hola, mi llamo Amy Greer. Uh, soy de Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. Uh, yo vivo en Scottsdale y he vivido aquí por 13 años. Uh, soy un... I don't know if I need un there, but uh, agente inmobiliario. Oh, bien. Okay. Soy agente. Soy agente inmobiliario. Um, me, me encanta a comer y viajar y amo mucho a mis perros. Ah, bien. ¿Cuántos, per, uh, ¿cuántos perros tienes? Uh, cuatro perros. Wow. Y ellos son galgos italianos. italianos. Eh, eh, es, es una raza, that's a breed. Yeah, they, they are Italian greyhounds, but in in other countries they're galgos. So, oh, okay. entonces son son no, perros grandes. Galgos, no. no, no, no. Oh, de así tamaño. Un poco. Uh, sí. Son pequeños. Uh, uh, toy. ¿Cómo se dice toy? Ah, pe sí, pequeño. Una una raza pequeña, small breed. Pero uh, no. No, you know, they're like. <laughs> okay. De, de tamaño así. You know, you want to say like the size. De tamaño así. De tamaño de, así. De, de tamaño así. Yeah, yeah, and then you use your hands and people get it. Sí. Uh, dos son trece años y ellos otros, or, or, or otros, son cuatro y cinco. No, tres y cinco. Okay. Uh, tengo no esposo y no hijos, pero tengo un hermano. Uh, mi madre y mi hermano vive en Pittsburgh. Uh, mi padre y otra madre, stepmother. 
A A Madrastra. Madrastra. Sí. Uh, vive en Pittsburgh y uh, tiene tienen uh, un casa en Fountain Hills. Oh, también. Sí. Pero uh, pero vienen en en invierno, ¿no? They uh, come in winter. Sí, sí. Okay. Uh, tres semanas en uh, uh, no no jubilado no jubilado ahora. No están jubilados. They're not no retired. Jubilado ahora. Sí. No están uh, jubilados. Ah, así es. Sí, de mucha gente en Pittsburgh. Tengo, tengo buena amiga que viene de Pittsburgh también. Sí, muchas ah, aquí uh, de donde Pittsburgh. Los inviernos son difíciles. En Pennsylvania, en Michigan, en, en Illinois, los inviernos son difíciles. Sí. Y uh, es hace hace buen tiempo aquí todo el, el invierno, entonces es un paraíso en el invierno. Sí, sí. Uh, ah, bien, no hay no hay nieve. No. Oh, pues casi nunca <laughs> nieva. It almost never snows. <laughs> hace yeah. hace dos años, sí, nevó sí. un poquito, pero Generalmente no. Uh, okay, we're going to put one thing in chat box. One thing to remember, no comes in front of the verb. No comes in front of the verb, right? No tengo, no tengo, no tengo hijos. I don't have kids. Sí. No tengo mascotas. I don't have pets, whatever it is that you don't have. Uh, no tengo motocicleta. I don't have a motorcycle. <laughs> Lo que sea, whatever it may be. Bien. Fantástico. Gracias. Uh, Dorothy, ¿quieres hablar un poquito o no? Yes. Sí. Ah, bien. Uh, vale. Dinos, tell us. Me llamo Dorothy y vivo en Scottsdale por dos años con mi esposo Jeff. Previamente vive en Nueva York en Juvalase, Arizona. Tengo dos hijos que viven en Nueva York. Me encanta hacer sandalismo y caminar. Tami, también estoy un voluntario en el Banco de Alimentos de St. Mary's. Quiero estudiar español por sus vacaciones en South America, pero los vacaciones son cancelados porque ah. el COVID. Sí, mm. claro. Sí. Uh, bien. Hay... Uh, Uh, dos maneras de decir South America. Uh, o oh, quizás tres. Uh, I'm going to put it in my chat box there. Uh, Sudamérica. Sudamérica o mm -hmm. América del Sur. Y no importa cuál. It does not matter which one you use. Uh, son the equivalentes. They are equivalent terms. Sudamérica. Uh, Sudamérica, América del Sur, uh, South America, just two different ways of saying it. Doesn't really matter which one you take. Uh, they're both totally understood. Uh, muy bien. A ver, okay. Uh, did I miss anybody? Sí, uh, hay alguien más o no? Creo que no. I think not. Bueno, no? Bien. Gracias. Muchísimas gracias. Uh, Vamos a hablar ahora un poquito. Um, vamos a hablar un poquito de the. We're going to talk a little bit about the, when to use it, when not to. Uh, which, uh, as I told you last week, is not a make it or break it kind of thing. I'm going to show you just a uh, screen share of the video. I will send a link of this to you. And I'm not playing this link. This is what the guy looks like, so you know. You'll know you have the right video when you see this. And it won't say excepciones, this is just kind of in the middle. Uh, it is a very long video, it is 19 minutes long. So, you know, we're not playing 19 minutes of video, okay? That's just a bit much. Plus it's all in Spanish. So it, it's probably kind of challenging, but I think at least some of you might benefit from listening it 
to it just for 19 minutes of listening comprehension because a lot of it you will catch. And he talks a lot. This is actually one of the best videos I've ever seen explaining when we omit, that means leave off, the word the. Uh, so I will let you watch that on your own time. Uh, don't worry if you don't understand all of it, but he does a very good explanation. As a matter of fact, he probably gets, he probably, he does, he does get into way more information than you need. Okay, so my job right now is to uh, break down uh, which elements out of that long video um, I feel you may need to work on for when to use the word the. And of course the word the will be broken down into el, la, los, or las. Vale. It seems like so many times, so many times in Spanish, we need to use the article. You know, you always, you are introduced, when you are introduced to nouns, names for things, okay? Uh, ooh, por ejemplo, por ejemplo, el, el ratón, el ratón, the mouse, you know, because they use that for a mouse too. Uh, when, 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 you know, el ratón, right? Uh, you're introduced to words like la casa. You're introduced to words like los papeles, los papeles. Bien? A ver. Um, muy bien. Um, you are introduced to words like la lata, okay? So you're always introduced, uh, uh, we introduce a noun, uh, with that word, el, la, los, or las. And a lot of the reason they do this is that uh, it helps you remember what gender, of course, what gender um, uh, is assigned to that noun, if it is masculine or feminine. Okay? And it does seem to the English speaker like we use the word the a lot more in Spanish than we do in English. And I think it, as a very general rule, that's often true, but there are times when we very noticeably drop or do not use that word, the. And it's often really important to know what kind of situations we do that in. So we're gonna talk about the situations that will be most used by folks at your level, okay? Because there are a lot of kind of well, kind of, not kind of, there are rules about this. Uh, but for you to memorize a whole bunch of random rules is not super helpful. For you to see which situations we drop uh, um, the article in, that is helpful. So we're gonna share some screens and talk about these a little bit more and, and talk about some examples. So I'm putting up the screen and you'll get the link for this. So don't feel like you've got to take notes. Feel free to just really focus on the information on the screen as opposed to writing it down. You'll, you'll get a copy of this later in the email. Uh, I'm going to highlight the biggies. I, I, there is, there are, does not use the article. Okay. Uh, I does not you, well, I may use an indefinite article, meaning the word ah. Uh, so it might say, you know, we might use it to say that there's one of a certain thing, but we never use el, la, los, or las with this word hay. Okay. Uh, hay fruta en la nevera. Hay muchos jóvenes en la playa. There are lots of kids on the beach. En mi ciudad hay mucho tráfico. In my city, there's a lot of traffic. Hay crema para el café. Is there cream for the coffee? Okay, with I, we never use el, la, los, las. Boom, never, never. I mean, that's like an always rule. I does not use el, la, los, or las, ever. I, so we never use uh, the article with that, okay? I can, might use that indefinite article. Or it might use a quantity, a number, it might but it won't use el, la, los, las. 
So, hay una farmacia por aquí. Is there a pharmacy? So, you just want one, right? You, you desperately need some medicine and you just need one that's around here, right? Hay una farmacia. So, we're just looking for a onesie. And then una indicates a quantity, this many. Uh, so we can include a word like that. Hay unos edificios históricos aquí. There are some historic buildings here, meaning there are a bunch of them, right? Hay mucho ruido. There's a lot of noise. This this word mucho, mucho is uh, kind of a, a vague, but it is a quantity. It, you know, it, it gives us an amount. So anytime we're talking about an amount, we can use an amount word be it specific or vague, with I. So we can use those. Hay dos vuelos a Phoenix mañana. There are two flights to Phoenix tomorrow. So uh, here, instead of mucho, just a quantity that's vague, I use dos as the actual specific number. So I can use numbers or general uh, uh, words that refer to quantity with I. I just don't use el, la, los, or las. Okay? Uh, muy bien. A ver. Okay. Here's one thing, and this is the thing that trips a lot of people up. And this example is the one that probably triggered this question in the first place. Cosas incontables. That means uncountable things. Contar is to count. Contar. Incontables means uncountable things. How can a thing be uncountable? You may say, well, cosas incontables, what they call in Spanish uncountable things, they generally do not use el, la, los, or las. What the heck do we mean by uncountable things? Oh, it is maybe better explained by me showing you things that are uncountable. Cosas incontables. ¿Qué son cosas incontables? Ah. Café es incontable. Café. ¿Sí? Ah. La, oh, la bolsa, la bolsa de café, de café. Café es incontable. Bolsa, bag, is not incontable. La bolsa, that is not incontable because I have only one. If I had a bunch of bags, you could count them, right? Pero café, coffee. Quiero café. Quiero café. Quiero comprar café. I want to buy. I generally don't say quiero comprar el café. Now, here's the thing where to not get yourself like all um, verklempt. <laughs> For lack of it. Don't, don't get yourself all twisted up over it. But it sounds more natural. Suena mejor. It sounds better. Ah. It sounds better. Quiero comprar café. I want to buy coffee. These coffee beans are incontables. Okay. Quiero comprar frijoles. Frijo Quiero comprar frijoles. Incontables. Okay. A ver. Uh, quiero comprar. Quiero comprar mantequilla. Quiero comprar mantequilla. Mantequilla. Ok. Uh, quiero comprar cereal. Quiero comprar cereal. Ah, quiero comprar mayonesa. Mayonesa. Bien. Uh, quiero comprar. Ok. What do all those things have in common? Would you ever open a jar of mayonesa and parcel out a, you know, like... <clears throat> reach in and, and grab a bunch of globs out. No, you might go to get in there with a spoon. But you buy this not as a countable thing. Um, you know, you don't buy 15 cereals. 
I might say una caja, una caja, a box, una caja de cereal. Una caja, caja es contable. Box is countable. Cereal no. Quiero comprar cereal. All these are little itty bitty things that are kind of collectively, you know, they're collectively, they amount to something. But we wouldn't count them in number when you buy them. You might count the number of jars, but not the item inside. Do you have a general idea of what I mean by incontable? Okay. Uh, as opposed to, momentito. Because I ran out of room. Tres cebollas. Contable. This is countable. Cebollas, cebollas, onions, son contables. These are countable. Because, you know, they come in, well, that's a whole onion, right? If I want to say I'm buying cereal, it's a whole bunch of these. These are not countable because nobody would count this out when they sell it to you. They will count out how many onions you want to buy. Bien, vale. Okay. Por ejemplo. Por ejemplo. Uy, momentito. Because I ran out of room. Contable. This is countable. Because, you know, you want a certain number. Platanos. Los platanos. Okay. Bien. So, um, that's kind of what they mean. That's actually exactly what they mean by incontable versus contable. Okay. Nouns that are not easily countable. Um, quiero arroz. I want rice. You don't count off every little bit of rice. Tienen sopa. Do you guys have soup? El plato tiene frijoles. The dish has beans. And you don't count out every individual beans. Tengo dinero. I have money. So those are incontables. Uh, here's the other big thing with not using el, la, los, las. When you tell somebody's profession, and estudiante is considered kind of in that profession category, even though, you know, you're not a professional student. <laughs> but, ustedes son estudiantes de español, ¿verdad? And um, somos programadores, ¿sí? Uh, Jorge es contador. George is an accountant. Matt Damon es actor. Uh, here we don't even use a. Uh. We would say Matt Damon. En inglés se dice. En inglés se dice. Matt Damon is an actor. George is an accountant. Right? Uh, and we often use an a uh, or an an. Uh, we don't use that in Spanish. So when we use uh, ser, the things these have in common, and I should have put that in, so I will. These use the verb ser. When you use ser to tell what somebody does for a living or as a job, uh, or often as a hobby even, right? Uh, we don't use even that word, a. Uh. Not only do we not use el, la, los, las, we, we don't even use a, uh, un, a, uh, unos, unas. So ser with a profession, no, el, la, los, las. We just don't bother with that, okay? Uh, here's one little exception. If I qualify the noun with more information, then I do plug in an el, la, los, or las. So, these examples do use a uh, or the. Ustedes son los nuevos estudiantes de español, verdad? And all this stuff, new students, now I'm qualifying it, I'm giving like more information. So to say, Matt Damon es actor, no an actor, just es actor 
if I changed this to say Matt Damon es el actor uh, uh, el actor uh, más talentoso uy uh, Matt Damon es el actor más talentoso de Hollywood now I would have to put the L in because I am qualifying it with more information. Then I zing in the L or the UN. El actor más talentoso de Hollywood, or I could even change it to es un actor talentoso de Hollywood. Okay, so when I qualify, when I start tagging on lots of descriptive words onto that word actor, then I need an article. Like in these examples. Ustedes son los nuevos estudiantes de español, ¿verdad? Somos unos programadores talentosos. Jorge es el contador de mi compañía. He's my company's accountant. Matt Damon es un actor genial. Once I start tagging on a description, it's that word actor, o contador, o programador, sorry, estudiantes. Now I need a word, a, uh, some, the, right? But just telling the profession, I don't need that. Bien. Uh, and one other little thing. Oh, one of those. Oh, yeah. Okay. One other little thing before we get on to kind of an associated topic with this. Casa versus la casa. This is something that comes up a lot because, you know, often we're talking about home. Home. And the thing to know is that la casa is house. But if you want to say home, it's just casa. And just casa without the word la means it's indicating your living space. So the way you say at home is either a casa, if you're talking about movement, we need the word a, like going to or coming into or entering into, we need a. Or en casa, if we're talking about stationary. Estoy en casa. Estoy en casa, I'm at home. Vamos a casa, let's go home. There is another word for home in Spanish, hogar. Uh, hogar is, um, uh, it's a little more formal word. Uh, somebody in real estate might want to know that word, hogar, <laughs> because, you know, el hogar, el hogar would mean somebody's home, their place of residence. And that word hogar is good to know. But when we talk in everyday conversation and saying that we're at home or we're going home or somebody is coming home, it's just casa without the la, without the la. And that means, you know, your comfy indoor living space. Bien. Uh, okay. Uh, voy a pausar. I'm going to pause for a moment. Does that make sense to all of you or do you have any questions so far? Si o no? No? no bien, bien, perfecto. Okay, so I hope that clarifies it. We're going to go back to one little thing about el la, los, or las, because this is important. So I'm, I'm highlighting things that are biggies. Biggies are things like I, right? Don't use el la, los, las. Uh, biggies are things like ser with your profession or your job. Don't use an article with that. Uh, okay. Um, uncountable things, you know, you don't buy five grains of cereal in the store. <laughs> okay. Uh, incontables, those uncountables. And that uncountables one will come with time. That will take just more practice, which will get, you'll get poco a poco, little by little. But we're going to take one other topic because this is one that, that people use a lot but they kind of tend to mess up a lot. And uh, this is one that kind of pegs you for a novice. <laughs> so we wanna, 
not peg ourselves. Uh, these two verb structures, me gusta, me encanta. Me encanta, I love, which is like a really intensified expression versus me gusta, I like, right? Literally, me gusta, it's pleasing to me. Or me encanta, uh, it's, it's delightful to me. Uh, but we use them in these two combinations, and I'll underline them here. And you'll, again, you'll get the link to these slides. We use them in these ways. These are the only two uh, verb phrases we use. Of course, we might sw swap out the me for a te. We might sw swap out the me for a nos. We might swap out the me for le or les, depending on who likes something, right? But often we talk about what I like or what I love. Me gusta, me gustan. Me encanta, me encantan. In English, uh, we skip the with like and love. Okay? So in English, we'll say things like, I love sports cars. I like, uh, I like winter sports. They like summer sports. We like pasta. We like Italian food. They don't like, they, ooh, they don't like summer classes. <laughs> Whatever. We don't use the. In Spanish, you need the word the with any me gusta phrase or me encanta phrase. You need it. Uh, and the reason for that is that when you say, you, when you use me gusta or me encanta, you're talking about a whole big category. And you're talking about everything in that category in general. Okay? So with me gusta or me encanta, we need to have the word the. And your English brain does not want to do that because English doesn't use it. So, okay, por ejemplo, for example, no me gustan los serpientes. O las serpientes, perdón, es las serpientes, perdón. No me gustan las serpientes. I don't like snakes. And that means you don't like any of them. You don't like that whole category of animal. No me gustan las serpientes. We would say, I don't like snakes. But in Spanish, you need the word less with these. Nos gusta el helado. We like ice cream. And that means all kinds of, the, of it, right? Many, many, many different kinds of flavors. We like that category of, flu, of food. Nos gusta el helado. Te gusta la comida picante. Do you like spicy food? We need the word la in there in Spanish. And in English, we would not use the word the. We mean all spicy food, any kind of food that has lots of spice in it. And because that is a whole category of food, we need la comida picante. We need the word la. Uh, a ella le gustan las flores. A ella le gustan las flores. She likes flowers. Flowers is a category of a gift type of thing, right? All flowers in general. A ella le gustan las flores. So in English here, we don't have the in front of snakes. We don't have the in front of ice cream. We don't have the in front of spicy food. And we sure don't have the in front of flowers. I mean, we might say she likes the flowers, meaning a specific bunch somewhere. But flowers in general is just she likes flowers. A ella le gustan las flores. So with gustar, with encantar, with these two verb phrases, we do need to use the word el, la, los, or las. Bien? Okay. Vale? Si? Hay preguntas. Are there any questions? Hay preguntas o no tienen preguntas? Yes, yeah, si. Sí. Okay. Why do you say me gustan? Me, ah, buena pregunta. Buena pregunta. Good question. Uh, me gustan because what you're really saying is not I like. What you're really saying is these things are pleasing to me. 
So the phrase that is saying, I need gustan is, oh, perdon, I need to put my share screen on. I'm gonna put the share screen on for your question. In the sentence, in la frase, si, no me gustan las serpientes, no me gustan las serpientes. Serpi las serpientes is really the subject of the sentence. Serpents are not pleasing. Snakes are not pleasing to me. That's what it really, really means. Because in Spanish, the word like as a verb does not exist. But you do say things are pleasing too. So what's making that verb into gustan, a plural verb, is serpientes. The thing that is liked drives the verb. So if the thing that is liked is plural, we need gustan. If the thing that is liked is, is singular, like el helado, then I need a singular verb, gusta. Who likes it doesn't determine the verb. The thing that is liked determines the verb. And it will either be gustan, plural, more than one, or gusta. Singular, just one Z item. Entiendes? Does that make sense to you? It is. It is kind of a. It's a reverse thing. Just and it's it's oddly that way because the verb doesn't technically mean like. It means to be pleasing. Sí, Cynthia, tienes una pregunta. Uh, uh, sí, and uh, she likes flowers. Is it sort of this, the same concept, something like to her, her, she likes flowers? Right. It means to her, the flowers are pleasing. Okay. Uh -huh. <laughs> Let's go back to share screen. Yeah, this, so this bumps up a whole, this opens a Pandora's box, doesn't it? <laughs> okay. But let's look at this last example. A ella le gustan. A ella. Wow, what a mouthful. Why do I need all that stuff? Yes. Well, okay. Let's take a look at that. A ella le gustan. Um, flores, flowers. There is the subject of the sentence. Flowers, they are pleasing. So we need las flores and gustan. Now, Technicamente, technically, I could just have this much information and still be correct. Le gustan las flores. Le gustan las flores. She likes flowers. But a little warning, a little caveat, a little warning is that le, oh, perdón, uh, le, le is a very vague pronoun in Spanish. Le can mean to her. Le can mean to him. Le can mean to you if the you is usted. And because le refers to many potentially different singular groups, I might not know out of context, I might not know if le means she likes, or he likes, or you formal like. So if I'm not sure that you understand the context, I might plug in the extra phrase, a ella le gustan. And the a ella merely has the job of clarifying that le means she likes as opposed to he likes, as opposed to you, formal you, usted, like. Entiendes, do you understand? Entiendes? Yes, but I better get this wrong for months and months. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I have another question. Okay, dime. When do you use the a uh, before the ella? Why is it only for- Why a? Uh? Yes, a ella. Why is it a ella? Why is it a ella? Because it means to her. To her. And the word to is the a part. I've seen a lot of the a in front of talking to, about people. 
a mi padre. A mi padre, right. I could put instead of a ella, um, a, a mi mamá, a mi amiga, a mi, a, a, a mi hijo, right? There's always an a and then the human being's name. Because you are giving, uh, or well, or we're not, we're not giving in this case. We use it with the verb give as well. But uh, something is pleasing to that person. And if we name that person, instead of just using the le, I must have the le, I can um, omit the a ella. You know, it might be clear. If I'm talking about, if I'm talking about my sister, you know, my sister this, my sister that, my sister lives in Michigan, my sister is older than I am, my sister uh, volunteers at a museum, she likes flowers, you know, you know, if I've been talking about all different things about my sister, I can omit the a ella, I can just say, le gustan las flores. Because you know I'm talking about her, and you would know already from all those other previous sentences that le meant she. I only need the a ella to make it clearer if I don't have a prior context. Can I say a uh, mi perro? A uh, mi perro, si. Sí. So you need the a uh, also for dogs? Or? Uh, for with, with, with gustar, we need an a. Uh. Okay. With gustar, you need that little word a. Uh. So then is it also correct to do ah in front of all of the other examples? And it's just not oh, there? Okay, let's take a quick look. Let's take a quick look at this. Okay, let's look at the top example. No me gustan las serpientes. Doesn't need an a phrase. Met can only refer to one person. Okay. Right? However, however, somebody, somebody might, they might want to be super emphatic. They might want to be really emphatic. A mí no me gustan. Oh. There the on me is just, it's just giving more punch, more emphasis, more zing to the me. It's icing on the cake. You don't need it to be there. It sprinkles on, on, on the ice cream sundae. You don't need it to be there. A mí no me gustan will be done in English this way. I don't like and in English, or I really don't like. We do it with the word really, or we punch the word I, I really don't like. We do it with the inflection of our voice. In Spanish, they don't need inflection in the voice, they just add an ami to make it more emphatic. Uh, how would you do it here? You would do it this way in the second example. A nosotros. Nos gusta el a nosotros nos gusta el helado. We would make it more emphatic by adding an a nosotros. Uh, with this third example, we would make it more emphatic by saying a ti te gusta, a ti te, a ti te gusta, a ti te gusta. In English, we might say a ti te gusta this way. Do you like? Do you like? We do something different with the inflection of our voice on that word you. But in Spanish, the way you do it is by adding an extra phrase, a ti te gusta. Uh, a ella could change to a Maria, a Juanita, a, 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 al, al chico. It could turn into any one singular person, right? The little a ah phrase with gustar is called a clarifying phrase. The a ah phrase with gustar, mind you, with gustar does not have to be there. It's there if somebody feels like using it. 
it might have to be there really only in this one I'm putting the, uh, the star by. It might have to be there in this last example because le is a fuzzy indefinite pronoun that ref can refer to many different people. And then I often hear an ah with a person's name. You may also, may also have that ah phrase with this pronoun les. Because again, les, like le, is indefinite. It means they like. It's the pronoun I would use in front of Gustav for they like. But les could refer to an all gal group, an all guy group a mixture of different people. It could refer to ustedes, you guys. So les, similar to le, is a fuzzy, not very definite kind of pronoun. So le and les often get an ah with the name of a, a group of people or a specific person. The other ones might not get an ah phrase at all. Bien? I must be going that's more questions. We'll practice that again another time. That's a, a fairly common phrase. What we originally, and it's okay that we got off on a bit of a tangent. Originally, what we're seeing is that where we don't say the snakes or the ice cream or the spicy food, with gustar or with encantar, you will use the las, the el, the, the la. Okay, uh, you will use the word the with gustar, with um, encantar. Bien? Vale? Okay, ay, 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 I'm getting kind of late. Okay, bien, that is fine. Um, okay, we're going to go off onto a different topic and we're going to focus on three different verbs. Which means we're going to actually introduce one whole verb. Sometimes, and we're focusing now that a whole idea of, of working in chunks of phrases, we're going to work on some chunks of verbs here. Uh, and again, I'm going to show you some little slides here. Wow, I was hoping we'd get to practice these, but we might not. We might need to practice these next week. That's okay, studying, because we're getting close to 11 o'clock talking about two verbs in one sentence, but those two verbs are really only talking about one action. And I sometimes call those verb one and verb two, V1 and V2. That's kind of how I want you to think of it. I want you to think of these verbs as a chunk, a verb phrase, not single words by themselves, but verb one and verb two. Sometimes we need two verbs to talk about one action, and I'll show you what we mean by that. Things like this, going to eat. Going is a verb, eat is a verb, but I'm using those two verbs together. I am going to eat. We can speak, can is a verb, speak is a verb, but we're using those two verbs together to talk about one action. He wants to go. Wants is one verb, go is a second verb. I have to pay. Have is one verb. Pay is a second verb, but we're using the two to talk about one action. Okay. Are they going to call? Going is one verb. Call is another verb, but we're using them together in one phrase. Uh, okay. So these are the examples. And we're going to focus on... Um, Ooh. Uh, these three, ir, uh, we're going to focus on the going to, on the can do something, and on the have to do something, okay? Um, so, and actually the nice thing is, the structure in Spanish is very similar to the structure in English. 
And the only thing you need to remember is we're going to conjugate the first verb, but we will not conjugate the second. So let's look at all these little examples. And many, many, many verbs will do this. So some of these examples you're seeing in this slide we will not use today. I'm going to focus on just the examples we're going to actually practice for the last few minutes. And then you guys are going to do independent practice next week. Voy a comer. Voy a comer. I'm going to eat. Van a llamar. They're going to call. This is indicating a future action, something that hasn't happened yet, but it will. You're pretty sure it's going to happen. And we talk about what we're going to do all the time when we have normal conversations, right? I'll call you tomorrow. I'm going to go and wait at the bus stop. I'm going to take a subway to get there, all right? Going to, we're talking about future. Here's another phrase we use a lot. Podemos, uh, uh, we can do something. Podemos hablar. Podemos hablar. Podemos, we conjugate. Hablar, we do not. Right? Uh, and the last example we're going to see is using tener. Tengo que pagar have to pay. Tienes que salir. You have to leave. Okay, so we're looking at three sets of verbs and you're going to see our, our, here are our chunks. Ir plus the little word a plus infinitivo. This is to talk about what you're going to do, what someone is going to do. And the only, in, in that phrase of ir Ah, and in infinitivo, the only verb we conjugate is ir. The second verb we don't conjugate. We do need this itty bitty word ah in between. Ir needs that little word ah. It just does. If you translate it, it means nothing at all in English in this specific structure. Okay. So here's what you need to know, how to conjugate ir. Un repaso, a little review. The way we conjugate ir is, ir is a very irregular verb. Because when you take away the ir to conjugate it, you got nothing left. <laughs> so the forms of ir are voy, voy, vas, va, vamos, by, well, vais you won't need, that's the vosotros form, and van. Voy, vas, va, vamos, van. And the V will not sound like a V with your teeth on your tongue. It will sound like a B, an English B. Voy, vas, va, vamos, van. We have to have that little word, ah. That little word, ah, doesn't mean anything, but you have to have it. And then an infinitive. I'm going to show you some examples. Vamos, vamos, vamos. Vamos, sí. Vamos. Sorry, I forgot. No, I mean. no. It's not in, that's okay. Aquí, ejemplos, here's some examples. Okay, and I want, I want you, this is going to be part of your homework. I'm going to want you to come up with some examples to talk about. Okay, por ejemplo, vamos a comprar comida por Instacart. We're going to buy food on Instacart, by means of, meaning we're not going to go shopping through the store, right? Instacart, that's how you do it, <laughs> right? If you want to order it on your phone or your tablet off your computer. You want that app because you don't want to go to the store. You want it delivered. That's Instacart. Okay. Vamos a comprar comida. Oh, there's an incontable. There's an uncountable. It's just any old food item. Vamos a comprar comida por Instacart. Vamos a comprar. Vamos, I have to conjugate. Ah, I just need that little word there and comprar. Don't conjugate it. Vas a practicar español conmigo. Are you going to practice Spanish with me? And I'll put the translations in here later because I'll send you all these. You'll get these slides via the email. Ricardo va a trabajar más tarde. Ricardo's going to work later. Mis hijos van a lavar los platos. My kids are going to wash the dishes. 
Okay, bien. Here's the second verb I'm going to want you to use next week. Poder, can. This is an oddball verb too, but how often do you say can or can't do something? A lot. Oh, I can be there at five. I cannot be there at eight. Yeah, we use that a lot. Poder is an oddball verb because it gets what is called a stem change, meaning that O, the O in poder for many, many, many of the conjugations, but not all. Ooh, I didn't want to make that yellow. Perdón. Um, there, that's what I wanted to do. That O in poder for many, many forms of the verb splits off into a different set of vowels. So we need to know how to conjugate the can part. And the way we conjugate it is a U-E. So, poder becomes puedo, puedes, puede, and pueden. And I'm going to send you a little video on that as well. Because it'll have lots and lots of examples and that's what you'll need because you'll be coming up with your own examples during class next week. And you'll probably want to scribble down. Okay, puedo, puedes, puede, pueden. The O from poder goes away and it splits off into two separate vowels. U, E, UE, UE. Puedo, puedes, puede, pueden. Oddly enough, for nosotros, because we don't need the vosotros example, I just put it there so you know what it is. In nosotros, that all comes back. It's podemos, podemos. So the UE does not happen in the nosotros form. This UE internal spelling change is called a stem change. Okay? I don't really care that you know that, but, you know. It may help you remember that this happens. Uh, it's called a shoe verb because it looks like a shoe <laughs> in the form it goes. Okay, ejemplos, examples. Here's how we use it. Poder does not need that little word a. Ir needs the little word a. Poder needs no little itty bitty word between itself and the infinitive at all. We use it to tell what you can do. Puedo hablar inglés. I can speak English. Mi esposo puede pagar. My husband can pay. <laughs> and notice, I don't have an A in between the form of poder and the second verb, the infinitive. This verb poder does not need anything in between itself and the infinitive. Puedo hablar. Mi esposo puede pagar. We also use it to tell what you can't do. Sometimes you want people to know what you cannot do. Los bebés no pueden hablar. Babies can't talk. No podemos viajar ahora. We cannot travel now. So, two verbs together. We conjugate poder. We don't conjugate the second verb. It stays as an infinitive. Here's the last one we're going to take a look at. And the last one you're going to practice with. We're, uh, and that is tener. Remember, tener is a very odd verb. It does have a stem change in many forms, but not in nosotros and not in uh, yo. So tener uh, will become tengo, I have, right? Uh, tienes, tiene, or well, tiene for él, for ella, for usted, right? Uh, Nosotros does not get an IE, it's just tenemos. Uh, I put vosotros in there, but we're not going to practice with it. That's used only in Spain. And then tienen is used for ellos or ellas or ustedes. Ellos tienen, ellas tienen, ustedes tienen. Now, ir needed the little word a. Poder means no little itty bitty word at all. Tener needs this word que. Again, if I were to translate it, it doesn't translate to anything at all in this structure. 
So we don't translate this word for word for word. Tener just needs that word que. And to use tener que with an infinitivo, with an infinitive, means that somebody has to do something. Okay, I'm going to back up a little bit. Ir means will happen in the future, but hasn't happened yet. Poder means somebody has the ability. They can or cannot, if it's negative, do something. Tener means has to. It tells you obligation. How often do we say have to, going to, can or cannot? We say these things conversationally a lot. So we're just taking this chunk of three verbs, tener que, poder, plus the infinitive, and ir a, and the infinitive. Okay, let's look at some examples with tener que. And that little word que is gonna be the tough thing to insert. Tengo que leer mis correos electrónicos. I have to read my emails. Tenemos que usar Zoom en la clase de español. We have to use Zoom in Spanish class. Tienes que pagar con efectivo. Do you have to pay with cash? Notice efectivo is incontable. Notice that cash, it's not countable. It's just money. Cash money, right? I don't need an ella with it. It's just incontable. It's just cash. Tienes que pagar con efectivo. Mis colegas tienen que trabajar en casa. My colleagues have to work at home. Tienen que trabajar. Tienen que trabajar. Tienes que pagar. Tenemos que usar. Tengo que leer. Ah, bien. These are two verb examples. Tener que. Poder. No little word, just the infinitive. Ir a. And the infinitive. We're going to use these next week. I will reference some page numbers in the book, but they'll, they'll jump around a little bit. Um, what I will want you to do is to take some little notes and talk about things that people are going to do. You can talk about yourself. You can talk about we, meaning yourself and your family. You can talk about your kids, your dogs, your neighbors, anybody. I want you to talk about what people are going to do to talk about future events. Write some examples down because you're going to use this in practice with each other in smaller groups next week. I want you to talk about what people can do or cannot do, what they have an ability to do and what they do not. And I want you to talk about some examples of what people have to do, what they're obliged to do, what things that they must do. Those three examples. And I'll send you that little, what that assignment is. I want you to think of three examples in each of those three categories. So you're gonna come up with ideally at least nine little sentences, okay? I preguntas, are there any questions? No? Okay. I will send you an email with that assignment. Um, I'm going to send you two videos. The videos on when to use the, which that's kind of a complicated one. I'm going to send you another video on poder, because that's a new verb for you. The verb for can. And I will send you this set of slides. Okay, so that you can see the examples. Um, next week when we come to class, before you go off into practice in smaller groups, I will tell you some little stories and use my own examples. So that while you're listening to my examples, you're gonna check what you've written down to share with people speaking. And if you've got any little mistakes, oh, you're going to see those and correct them in your own examples. And perhaps ask me some questions after those little examples and the little stories. 
And then you're going to go off into groups and practice your own examples. Does that make sense to you? We're, we're going to preface as warm up. Here are little stories where I talk about what people are going to do, what people can do, what people have to do. Uh, if you see from those examples that you've made some errors in your own work, you're going to try to correct it. If you haven't quite got it yet, you'll ask me questions, and then you're going to go off and practice separately. Does that make sense? Is that in? Okay. Um, if you come up with questions between now and next week, please tell me, right, uh, definitely if you have questions beforehand, but I'll send you all of these files, computer files and the links to the videos you need to watch via email. Está bien. Vale, magnífico. Entonces, espero que ustedes tengan buen, una buena semana. I hope you all have a really good week. Cuídense mucho. Really take care of yourselves so that you all stay well and healthy. ¿Está bien? Magnífico. Entonces, uh, wow, I'm only, I have taken you 10 minutes over. Perdón. <laughs> <laughs> I ask your forgiveness for taking you 10 minutes over. Uh, nos vemos, nos vemos la semana que viene, ¿verdad? Bueno. Espero que, I hope that, espero que, I hope that. Espero que ustedes tengan una semana magnífica. Aunque hace mucho calor, ah, más de 100 grados, 105 de, grados, 105 degrees, 105, ay, 105, 105, 105 grados. Es un horror. That's really awful. Ok. Vale. Magnífico. Hasta la semana que viene. Until next. Hasta lunes. Gracias. Hasta lunes, ¿verdad? Gracias. Nos vemos de nada. Que lo pasen bien. Have a good time. <laughs>